the guy on the buffalo was riding around in the plane, the seen up air. And he thought to himself, oh man, I got to get away from this bear. Hope he doesn't start chasing, oh, he's chasing me. Oh no. Oh no, I better just turn around and chase him back. Cause guess what? what? I'm on a buffalo, guy on a buffalo. Hey bear, I bet you didn't know you was chasing a guy on a buffalo. Look out, everybody look out and watch him go. Oh no, 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 you don't want to mess with a guy who's riding on a buffalo. Hey, wildlife, watch your shit, man. Don't mess with a guy on a buffalo. And then the guy on a buffalo was romping around in a field. The buffalo was minding his own business, but also he was getting hunted by some hunters, and one of them was loud. And the one hunter tackled the other hunter, and that hunter got mad, and then the other hunters punched him, which I didn't think was appropriate, but no. it, the other guy punched him back, and it basically got out of hand. It turned into this whole big deal. But then the guy on the buffalo, he snuck up on him like a ghost. It was so creepy. The guy on the buffalo said, hey, it's me. Are you guys hunting buffalo? And they were like, no, we're not hunting buffalo. We would never do that. And he was like, cool. Just don't forget I'm riding around on a buffalo, and I'm badass. And they were like, no, no problem. And then he rode away, and they shot him. Oh, no. That guy was wearing a full-grown buffalo coat. That's an uninteresting verse, I know. But it sets up this one. So then, one day a geezer in a forest found a dead buffalo with a body on his back. No, the buffalo was dead? No, the buffalo was alive. Okay, yeah. dead body on his back. So he took him to his barren wife, and this happened before the baby thing. And so normally the buffalo would have his back, but he was shot, I guess. Yeah. So they took him in and fed him some soup. And like 30 minutes later, the yeah. guy felt fine, and he was like, hey, thanks, guy. I got to go check on my buffalo. How you doing? And he's like, I feel better already. Thank you, bearded guy. And say, what's up with this raccoon, y'all? They said, oh, he makes our dinner. I hope you like dumplings. The guy said, I do like dumplings. They're great. Oh, let's sit down and eat these dumplings. How you like them? They're great. How do you like them? The raccoon said, I like them too. Oh, God, thank you for complimenting my dumplings. Got on a buffalo. Gentlemen, let's get one more round of applause for the Possum Bossy! Make some noise for DJ Fuzzy Knot behind me. So, I'm pretty normal like y'all. I like to kick it with uh, Justin and Brian. I uh, take out the trash. I do laundry. I watch Rick and Morty, play video games. Sometimes I make rap music. I kick it with Mike TV. Also, my real name's David. My interests are sci-fi, internet, and gaming. Grabbing hold of mics and running up on stages and spit a hard drive full of rhymes, rocking faces. Face it, this is what I do. I do this for my people, namely you, you, and you, true. A rapper in his own, it could write his own code. Hack the OS on your phone, then go home. Put himself to the test, then go to work and sit for hours at a desk. While still spitting, hot enough to cook an atom. Well, let me share a secret. You're looking at him, believe me. Six fours trying to defeat me. My beat needs a regular expression, being greedy. Appease me, feed me, about to lose my mind. He's got JVM tracks, they compile just in time. Got him overclocked. He's maxing out the load. My guitar hero flows, always eating up the notes, breaking the controls. I take him to my shows. The drums LS1, about to make your head explode. Boom, a headshot every time I go. Start a round, hunt him down. Everybody knows. Listening, the beat turns the heat up to blistering. Can't touch a key that the feed was encrypted in. Dual core on the mic, and we're keeping it tight. Everybody said, all right. All right. Just have a good time till the end of the night. Everybody said, all right. All right. Top of the game, and that's just how it goes. The best act around or in town that you know. Get prepared for return of the snare. Rock the flow for the rest of the show. So now, 
Ready to run, second and none. Better be steady forever we run. Rev the tongue, rev the fun, not the sun. Right. Download and click run. Hear me coming to get some exhibiting all the symptoms. One. More time for my people in the front row. Loving all you folks. Give me energy, rip it a show. Want to get back? Call me part of the riff. Grab, tear me down the mic. Every night, coming to spit facts. Never been able to skip that. Calling the seven force down and rising out of the impasse. Cause you never know. Trojan all of my band bash. Home with my cell phone. Always rocking a tin hat. Set connect. Sending the packets with the sin act. Always working it hard. Once in a while, I've been able to kick back. Dual core on the mic. And we're keeping it tight. Everybody said, all right. Just have a good time till the end of the night. Everybody said, all right. All right. Top of the game. It's just how it goes. The best sack around or in town that you know. Get prepared for return of the stair. Rock the flow for the rest of the show. So I've been busy. Still stocking up the stores with fresh produce from the legend 6-4. Days off the calendar, believe I've been counting. Glued to my keyboard, writing for the album. I've been on the internet, announcing to the public. Getting five-star reviews of all the things published. Touring every weekend, hanging out with fans. Signing every autograph and shaking every hand. I've been out promoting the only way I know. Showing up my flow while I'm flowing at my shows. But out on stage live, ripping the set. It's only because I've been at work, chained to my desk. I've been stressed about my talent and capacity. And if this new album could compare to lost reality. Truthfully, I've been wondering if we finished. It came out like two years ago. Yeah, we win it. Our last album, Downtime, was number one on Bandcamp. Thanks to awesome folks like y'all. Everybody on the internet, this one's for you. My people in the crowd, this one's for you. You saw us in a show. If you helped our music grow. You put the symbol beef in it. If you ripped it and seeded it. They said come out west and rock it before long. I went to San Diego and played a tour con. Tim and Akari went and brought the show to me. With CMOS talking about touring overseas. They said come to the east coast, we want to see you. Thanks to the potters, I've been rocking out at Schmoo. They said down south, your fans won't believe it. So Sky Dog and Merlin brought us down to freaking every single stage. Every time I rap live, I see Paul and Darren and Shannon for Pac-5. Ask for a freestyle, I ride more lies. See me with the DC, 949. Finesse with Savant, connect with the wires. Quick, pop a box, CP and other virus. Reversing and coding, connecting the shells. Cause these search algorithms don't optimize themselves. Make some noise if you're having a great time. Everybody on the internet, this one's for you. My people in the crowd, you saw us in the show. If you helped our music grow, you purchased it and believe in it. If you ripped it and seeded it, then this one's for you. All right, everybody, let's give it up one more time for Dual Core! Hey, everybody! Shh, shh, shut up and oh. sit down. The, show, the show's about to start. Come yeah, on. it's National Good. Women's Day! Yay! <laughs> and we're here Women. to tell you to shut up and sit down! Yeah! <laughs> so, so um, thank you for everybody coming out and enjoying the Diamonds Are Forever! We're bringing on Night Attack. We are. We it's are. Brian Brushwood and Justin Robert Young. So who are we gonna sing for gonna Night Attack? attack. <laughs> <laughs> we already forgot. Man, oh man. Yeah. 49 cents on the dollar. Best investment we ever made. Uh, indeed. That's Wait, a in what? That's a feminism joke. Is it? Uh, I don't know. Hot start. Hot start here to the Night Attack uh, live show. Uh, we'll see how long into the show you guys realize that this is the only part we didn't plan. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. How uh, uh, have things gone so Very far sad. today? Sad. Very sad. Sad? Why sad? I watched Captain Marvel. <laughs> no? Too soon. Are we going to do it? 
I mean, are we gonna do the Captain Marvel conversation? I, 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 are we responsibly allowed to have the Captain Marvel conversation? Cause, cause by the way, cause by the way, by the way, I had to wait until Wonder Woman came out and I liked it to actually talk about the Ghostbusters movie. So. I'm gonna have to wait until Wonder Woman 2 comes out so I can talk about Captain Marvel. <laughs> Wonder Woman was great, though. It was, exactly. Yeah. A good one had to come out. Uh, hey, look, uh, 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 we're, we're doing a, re a real big fun thing tomorrow. We're having a bunch of people out to your compound. Uh, we're doing a tour. But you described to me, because when I was there earlier this week, it is a thicket, it, it is a wood, it, 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 it is a woodland, right? But apparently it's not going to be that tomorrow. Well, you were right up until you used the present tense. Ah. Uh, so, okay, we, what we needed was a tarp and a hazmat suit. So we decided to stop by the property and what we discovered was the, the, third act, or the, the second act of Avatar. Uh, <laughs> like the, 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 the James Cameron, not the M. Night Shyamalan. Sure. Uh, we definitely showed up with bobcats just tearing down trees left and right. And there was definitely this moment where Bonnie, like I think consciously we all knew that it's like to build a thing, what you do is you clear You remove the area. trees, yeah. yeah. But then you walk up and it's like they're in the middle of being the villains trying to find unobtainium. Exactly. And then, and then you're just like, Ugh. Just ripping out trees as Mother Gaia screams like, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know that we've been doing this goddamn show for five years is we literally just had not one but multiple people do the foley work for the screaming mother gaia oh my god i love the fact that we've been doing this uh give yourselves a round of applause for being here this is wild man we we, we stepped it up this year yeah well, well I, to be honest, we, we, we made it a pro gig, right? Like, like, like we actually rented out a venue. It looks beautiful. I'm really excited for all this to show up on YouTube. We're, we're, we're doing the VIP. It smells like vinegar. Yeah. Vinegar. Uh, that, that, that actually, of course, is the old world uh, good luck, right? Yeah. You know, in, in, in the old country, uh, uh, when you want to signify hey, you know good what? luck, hey. you spray it with vinegar. You know what? We don't have to live here. You know who does have to live here? The venue that comes in after us. You know what they should smell? Vinegar. Vinegar. Fuck you. Yeah. Someone's going to be here for like, like the Filipino dance-off that's renting this after us, and they're going to be like, wow, what smells like uh, salt and vinegar chips? Like, it's going to be an issue. For fact, them, we, not for we, us. We should provide them with salt and vinegar we chips. We should buy them salt so and vinegar all very chips. Confused. That's a good point. All right, so, look. Okay, so so they cut down a whole bunch of trees, which is good news because they're going to build the building there. But uh, if you are in the VIP crew tomorrow, you'll get to see an awful lot of me and Bonnie saying, like, there used to be a bunch of trees over here. Uh, yeah. Which, which, that part's not great. Yeah, oh, that's right. Also, snakes everywhere. This is a very serious thing that was just said from uh, 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 stage right here. Don't step on any snakes. And that goes for all of you who are visiting the great state of Texas. Uh, please do not step on any snakes. So the important thing is, is, is like progress is being made. If you're going to show up tomorrow, if you're part of the VIP crew, we're going to talk about all of this stuff and I'm, yeah. we're going to tell a bunch of the story. In fact, I found myself like desperately close to disclosing to, to Matt and Paul all the details of the story. And I found myself like doing that awkward thing. Where I'm like, nope, nope, not uh -uh. until tomorrow. No. Not until tomorrow. Tension. VIP. Tension. Tomorrow. Edging. Tomorrow. Your story right. edging. Totally edging. I'm an edge. Bigger lord. laugh than I thought. Uh, <laughs> so here's the important thing. Where we're yeah. at right now is we are in the home stretch of a three hour comedy podcast and music experience. How have you guys enjoyed this so far? <laughs> Jomo and the Possum Posse. Yep. Ice Cream Social. All the way from Las Vegas. Live Modern Rogue, which we've never done never before. Never done. And by the way, maybe never again. Shut Who knows? Up. Shut up. It was great. Everybody loved it. Was it was great. It was great. It was certainly the shortest shoot we've ever had. 
<laughs> You're like, oh shit, we can do this more. This in is 11 great. minutes? In oh, 11 geez. minutes, we're in and out. And of course, dual chord, you guys enjoy. Let's get a big, where's dual chord? I don't even know where he is. Uh, this has been a big step forward for us in the Night Attack uh, uh, live show enterprise, but we wanted to make this more special. And so we invited so many of our amazing friends. You want to bring one of them up right now? Yes, only ladies, one. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and bring up from the Something's Off with Andrew Heaton podcast, it's Andrew Heaton. Yeah! <laughs> Andrew, Andrew Heaton, Heaton now taking a victory lap. lap. He's hugging people <laughs> in the back. <laughs> It's clearly a big yeah. moment for Andrew Eaton. For the record, <laughs> Andrew Eaton is dressed like an Old West bank teller. And he has now picked up his hey, beer. He picked up his own. He began he is, with the ending in mind. Yeah, he is shaking oh, hands. Oh, that's great. All of my public appearances are just basically me running for mayor. <laughs> uh, and it seems to be working. Uh, I, w I will say, like, uh, uh, Especially knowing that, that um, eh, forgive me for saying this, but uh, you don't have a live studio audience, so I'd imagine it's fun to have people in the this room This is with really, you. I, it's, I, I, my, my background is stand-up comedy, and if, if, you, if you've not done that, it's terrifying to do something where no one laughs. You come off and you're like, oh my God. Yeah. So this is really cool, and I already like hugged half of you, so you <laughs> like me. So I get, I get positive feedback regardless. This is great. I would yeah. love to believe, uh, and by the way, for the uninitiated, the reason that we love Andrew Heaton is because he is of the same ilk as Justin Robert Young and that he understands that this red versus blue team-based dichotomy needs to be smashed. And so instead he's, you know, both sides seeking to understand each other, doing something truly wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and yet he's I doing it. He's doing it. Uh, uh, when you're in the room, there's two people, and and uh, uh, I, in my imagination, I would like to believe that every time you wrap up something, you walk up to Glenn Beck and say, uh, "Tough audience tonight." <laughs> <laughs> my, my, Got no, my, no laughs. My my sh my shtick is, I'm I'm funny, but I also think there's a bunch of us that are just kind of exhausted, yeah. and I'm yeah. I'm representing the exhausted people. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Who's exhausted right yeah. now? Who's exhausted? We got a lot of exhausted hands. No Please. more work. No, no more, more work. work. No more work. No more work. Well, so it's, we, it's, were, we were uh, live uh, on your show. Uh, by that, I mean in person uh, yeah. at, at uh, uh, the Something's Offset. Yeah. And Brian called the president a pussy and got bleeped. God damn it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, and what, what, what's weird is I meant it as a compliment. <laughs> I was happy. That was the thing I was happy about the present. That was it. No, it's it's fun. It's fun. I, I enjoy having you guys on regardless because I really like you. You're you're thoughtful and funny, but also you lull me into this false sense of security. <laughs> where normally, like I'm kind of like I just every every podcast I start out and I'm like I know the width and breadth of the. It's a big audience, and I'm like I don't want to piss them off. I don't want to piss them off. And then Brian will come on and be like, but don't you hate this one group? <laughs> yeah, I do hate them. And then afterwards, I'm like, oh, God, I, I shouldn't have said that thing about Jeff Sessions or whatever it is that I did. Yeah. yeah. No, it definitely is one of those things where, where whenever I'm on your show, it'll be like 20 minutes of us like engaging in, in, in very, very smart, uh, if I do say so myself, uh, uh, political a lot conversation. Of, a, lot of, a lot of compound words. Yeah. And, and, and then at some point, I'll just lapse into what I normally do, which is like, having a, a, a metaphor for a complicated situation be a bukkake or something. <laughs> and you're like, wow, this is definitely gonna be on Blaze TV. Look yeah, at that. Uh, <laughs> every time, every Code time. Heaton. When, Code whenever, Heaton. Whenever Justin comes on the podcast, I have to have an obligatory, very awkward conversation with my parents where we Google some term. That winds up being <laughs> some kind of Japanese pornography. And it's, yeah. it's always very odd. So how's it going? It's going great. This is, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, thrilled to be on stage with you guys. This is also an excellent alibi for stuff I've been up to the last 24 hours. So this is, this is great. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so I'm you really all saw him here, here and I, he's I, been here for the last three hours. Can, can I share a, an epiphany that it may be alcohol inspired, but I think it's a legitimate epiphany that I had. Go. Uh, We're so teetotalers. I, I, yes, I know. Yes. You, uh, 
I, I come out of the comedy world, and we have, uh, as, as do all of us, but stand-up world specifically, and we have these conversations about, like, ah, oh, vaudeville, wasn't that great when you could, like, you know, you could, just everybody Steal was on the road. other people's material, yes, exactly. wear blackface. We're doing new, this is the, <laughs> the, this is new vaudeville. We're all participating. This is the vaudeville of the 21st century, and it's really cool to be on stage with you guys doing it, and it's cool to be a part of this with you. That we're, we're, we're doing this live performance stuff, and it's coming back, and I, I'm, I'm so yeah. excited. Hells yeah! Yeah! We're bringing vaudeville back, yeah. baby! <laughs> We've got yeah. a whole who's on first thing we're going to do. It's going to be great. Anyway, so my glad. wife is so fat. I swear <laughs> to God. I just want you to verify. Where is she? She's gonna there are no the eggs kidney. in this bag, right? <laughs> Feel this bag. There's no eggs in it. It's fine. Uh, all right. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much for coming on down uh, to Austin to do this show. Oh, no, no, no. You're not off stage. Whoa, whoa, You're not whoa, off whoa, stage. Whoa, 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 Get back whoa. on here. Uh, but we, uh, we should probably uh, build out our special guest roster yeah. a little oh. bit. Before we do, do you even know what you were in for? Like, you said yes, and then said, what did I say yes to? Yeah, I, I mean, I knew that there would be beer. Uh, <laughs> Safe bet. Be, be, beyond that, I'm told I have to have, like, amusing anecdotes. That's, that's what I was given. It was, like, amusing anecdotes. And I was like, all right, yeah. that's, I built a whole career out of that. So. Fair enough. Fair you, enough. you look like the most tenured newsy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, your look is very well put together. I, I, I think I look like the professor who saves the town in a Broadway musical. <laughs> but either way, I see where you're going, and I agree. You're definitely the befuddled young associate professor. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, bring out some of our other special guests here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, joining us from the Whiskey Tribe, let's make some huge noise for Rex and Daniel. Come on up. So, one of my favorite things about Night Attack is that we, uh, we seek constantly to make new friends and expand our, our, our family. And, and we really do think of it as a family. Uh, Andrew Heaton, the moment we saw any of his stuff, it's like, oh my God, he, he gets it. That, that, that politics can be fun and funny, but also not acerbic and awful and painful to watch. Yeah. Likewise, uh, Rex and Daniel let us know that there's money in whiskey. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> There's money in the banana Who stand. Who likes drinking whiskey up in this bitch? <laughs> <laughs> if you are not familiar, uh, uh, Whiskey Tribe, Whiskey Vault, uh, the, uh, two YouTube channels, because why not? Uh, I, I, uh, the, the, the sommelier and the mooch. How, what is your elevator pitch for what it is you guys do and what you are? So basically, your channel is called Scam Nation right now. Yes. Somehow... We scam thousands of people to letting us drink whiskey on video and get paid for it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so we win. Yeah. So uh, well, I we mean, win. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So, elevator pitch whiskey review channel, which we don't really talk about the whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> it's about half dick jokes, and occasionally we mention the whiskey. And then whiskey tribe is we have. Uh, thousands of magnificent bastards that decided to crowdsource a whiskey distillery with us in Austin, Texas. And so we went from a couple of ass hats to. I, I, got, I, I for one, am not surprised. That? You can you totally can start do that. your own distillery? Oh, it's not a Patreon account? I, I am not surprised. I, I, I knew from the first moment that you guys started that you were going to be a success because there is always money on the internet in paying people to. Uh, watch you swallow on camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's always That's money science. in that banana stand. <laughs> By the way, is there medallion. anybody in the crowd who only <laughs> knows the Whiskey Tribe folks? One, uh, oh, we have, we have three, four, three drunks in all the three of them back of the room. Are here. Magnificent bastards, they're yeah. called. Okay, uh, tomato, so, tomato. Okay, so here in our silly show, we developed a game called Don't Get Brody. Did you guys see this? Maybe our cleverest thing in that it, uh, it's storytelling as bull riding. In other words, it doesn't matter how good the story is. What matters is the clock starts, and if you keep everybody's attention uh, until one person out of however many panelists thumbs downs, uh, that's the moment that the clock ends and everything is over. We thought that this year at South by So Wasted, we would subvert our entire uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do celebrity edition. Don't get brodied. Yeah. Now, 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 now. 
Don't get too cocky, audience, because normally what happens is you guys are the storytellers. We got a little mic out in front. Everybody tells their best story, and that's that. But if you are not the storytellers, then you need to be a judge. So you will be one vote in the Justin, Don't Get Brody Justin, panel. Justin, this is chaos. This is insanity. You want to give everybody a vote? That would be I democracy. Do. I do, I do. Because as everybody We're knows, you don't that. get brodied when the story starts, your thumb's in the middle. If All it right. gets boring, How about then it goes down. If it is exciting, it goes up. So we needed somebody that had very specific qualifications. You're right, describing Brian? representative democracy. Indeed. And that I can get behind. Yes. Only who should the representative be? None other than Daily Tech News Show's own Tom Mary. <laughs> You, you all know that this is literally how Supreme Court decisions are made. Yeah. If you, if you go to Washington and you sit in the Supreme Court, Justice Breyer has a big foam thumb. And, and, and that's there behind this. It's called Don't podcast fiat. Uh, Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, you can adjust that if you want. <laughs> Here, I'll take that. Yeah, you go. So, all right. So here's the game. Uh, we're gonna flip every. We're gonna flip the script. Uh, everybody who is normally a panelist who gets to thumbs up, thumbs down, has to go out in the audience, and we have to tell our stories. You guys have a voice. Tom uh, will represent hold your on. voice. Hold on, Brian. No. Hold no. on. I mean, no. look. When we normally do, don't get brodied. The win is that you just get the honor of winning Don't Get Brody. But this is not regular Don't Get Brody. Oh, this is we celebrity have, we Don't Get Brody. Stakes. So in other words... Like, I don't okay. get out of bed for fucking nothing, right? Okay. Come so on. I'm a like real big shot. Celebrity Jeopardy is yeah. for bullshit money for charity. Yeah. We're going to have real stakes. Real stakes. That we're going to win yep. as the celebrities. Indeed. In a game we invented. Facts. Great. <laughs> And so we need to find out what those prizes are. Whiskey Tribe, did you bring prizes? We brought some whiskey. Hey! Oh. Shock and awe. Yes. Now, first place just gets to choose which one of these three they want. Okay. Second gets to choose from the remaining two. And third gets the other one. Yeah. And then there's what everyone else drinks. And, and so, uh, so everybody who tells a story... It's just Campari. Campari. <laughs> That's gross. Okay. Okay. Now, there is, quickly, 25-year-old Buna Haben, special Ooh. release. That, that's the, uh, like drinking a very elegant campfire. That's yes. fantastic it's, right there. It's, that's it's lovely. peaty and heavenly. Yes. It's, uh, it's like a lion with uh, velvet jaws. The uh, Flaming Heart, the new Flaming Heart, which is a special release from Compass Box, has only a thousand or so bottles in it. And then I the don't know what the fuck you're talking about, but I know somebody's dick is rigid right now. Yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah, somebody, he is. somebody is like too messant just hearing you say those words. He may need to walk awkwardly out of the room. This and is, I gotta uh, have a chub just thinking about it. Balconus Hechiceros is the third one, which is a special edition release in Tawny Port aged single malt. All right. Okay. So there. All right, so I, I now want to win. <laughs> Previously, this was just an excuse to write off my, my beer bill on taxes, but now I've got a <laughs> direct incentive. Okay, all right, uh, cool. All right, now, here's what I want. I want Ice Cream Social. I want Possum Posse. I want Dual Core. Well, if I you want guys us. got stories. I want my wife. Now's when you come on up. We want, are going I to want do Mike TV. Mike TV wants to tell stories. Everybody, let's get lined up. So now, Tom, Jason Murphy, the Modern Road, get ready. Uh, here's the deal. Tom uh, stays there. Uh, he's going to be looking out into the audience, so everybody in the audience needs their thumb at middle. All right. Let's test this. Let's test this. Thumbs By the middle, way, please. So, so yeah. let, let me throw this out here. Andrew, I'm, I'm going to... I hope it's okay. I'm going to throw you in with a lot of the judges. Okay, thumbs down as Brian bores right, cool. you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, right. Brian's I, I, being boring. Okay. Brian's being boring. No, Justin well, makes so a joke. I'm a, thumbs up. I, <laughs> okay, really right, well, I get a right. whiskey bottle. I'm gonna take my shirt off in just a second. Thumbs way up, thumbs way oh. up. All right, good, good, good. All right, all right, all right. it works, it works. Everything's working. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna all right, be, all right. I'm gonna we are gonna compete score. at our own game. Uh, do me a favor, do not be kind. The moment you are bored, bloop, at which point we hear. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, I, I, I have to ask on behalf of the, the people that may or may not be competing, how many thumbs downs do I have to do before I get one of those The first of one the that first goes one. down, you're done. Okay. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Brutal. Ooh, all right. All, all it takes what? is one. All it takes is one. What, one you, of these. Yeah, yeah, one yeah. Of yeah. These. By the way, yeah, you're, you're telling the story, so just, you don't, you don't no, have no, your no, thumb no. out. Just be a fair judge, and you'll get, a, you'll get it. Oh. It's fine. So, all right, who's going first? We got, we got a line. Here, I'm going to join the line. Fuck you. There we go. There we go. Uh, all right, so uh, let's go ahead. Uh, who's? Oh, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Paul Mattingly. Yeah! Thumbs in the middle, everybody. Thumbs in the middle. All right. Uh, and, uh, here we go. All, all on three. One, two, three. Don't get Brody. So I live in Las Vegas. I've been there 21 years now, the first 10 of which I spent my life as a professional paid Klingon. Yes, I worked at Star Trek The Experience. That's where I got my start in Las Vegas. So I wandered around a replica DS9, Quark's Bar, singing Klingon opera songs, using limited Klingon language that I did know just enough about to tell people where the bathroom was and where I kept my chocolate. And today was a good day to die. Higlugmek kachajvam, by the way. And so I would tell those stories. Well, I used to also do this little ritual with people at the bar called the Bahat Cool Challenge. And the Bahat Cool Challenge was a chance for them to beat up the Klingon. But I made it safe. I made it safe. So I put my arms up like this. They put their arms inside of mine. We wandered around. I acted like, oh crap, you're so strong. Well done, warrior. And we shake like warriors because that's how warriors shake. One guy I misjudged and he was a lot drunker than I thought he was. We're in the middle of the Bahat Cool Challenge. I'm on three inch platform heels with a giant fake rubber forehead and a huge rubber tire, an actual rubber tire around my waist as a sash because that's what the next generation costume designers thought Klingons would wear in the 23rd century. Fucking tires with the Klingon emblem on it. That's what we wear. That's protective armor. That's going to keep a docta from piercing you in one of your two redundant hearts. Bullshit. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just a fucking tire. Anyway, he grabs my arms quickly as we're in the middle of the Bahad Cool Challenge. He is not playing along. He is not fucking around. He is taekwondoing my ass. He kicks my fucking leg. I am three inch platforms. I cannot keep my balance even though I'm holding on to this ass hat. I fall the fuck down onto the floor of Quark's bar. I am laying on the ground. My fake forehead is halfway off, exposing my complete phoniness and bullshit to the world. I am dying inside because I am losing all credibility as a character. I have been this character for almost a decade. Voha, son of Vong, has let down Kalis and countless others in Stovacor because this asshole has tripped me and knocked me to the fucking floor. I'm like, God damn it, no, he has got me. He grabs my left arm hard, jumps on my fucking neck and shoves his knee into my neck. He pins me on the ground with a goddamn Taekwondo move. I'm like, shit, ah, ah. And he says, while I'm in there, laying on the ground, he goes, do you yield, Klingon? Do you yield? Do you yield? And I look up at that motherfucker from underneath my fake forehead, which is lined with a woman's panty liner to keep sweat from going into my eyes during the day, because that's another secret about Klingons. Many feminine hygiene products incorporated into the uniform secretly to keep us safe. I look up into his eyes as he strains against my neck and shoulder, and he once again says, do you yield? And in my deepest, most earnest Klingon voice, I look up to him and I say, never. <laughs> now, I also would be walking around the museum, which was upstairs, which is the line. <laughs> Good watch. We're at three minutes, 36 seconds is the record to beat. Well done, well done, well done. Who do we have next? Come on up to the stage, Jomo. Yeah, people, people bailed out from in front of me when they started hearing that story, and I tried to bail out, <laughs> and I could, they wouldn't let me out. 
There's no way. There's no way I can follow this. Get your thumbs in neutral position, ladies and gentlemen. I yield to the Klingon. Can I just forfeit to the Klingon? Go. Go, Jomo. Okay. So far, the crowd is with you. I had the opportunity to travel to uh, India, and my friend said, we got to go to the Taj Mahal. And I said, okay, let's go to the Taj Mahal. And he said, I got to get this photograph of the moon rising over the side of the Taj Mahal. And uh, so everybody, we got to the Taj Mahal. So many people are thumbs downing already. Does that mean I'm out? No, not yet. Oh, it's like an average. the crowd. Okay, so uh, he says everybody's looking at the Taj Mahal and, and bathing in its majesty with the reflective pond. And he says, no, we got to get to the back side of the Taj Mahal. So he and I go around, and um, he gets the moon coming up. And just, so, just as, as that's happening, there's a... Val there's a cliff on the back side of the Taj Mahal and a little bit of a, a, a rise on this side, and this troop of monkeys is coming down. Ah, yeah. monkeys! Reese's monkeys. So they start coming down, and they travel in packs. <laughs> yeah. I didn't taste them, but yes. They're coming down. There's like 50 of them, and they're coming between the cliff and the edge of the like, platform the Taj Mahal sits on. So we scoot back. And he says, this isn't quite right. You know, this is, let's, we got to get this way. And I said, well, let's let the monkeys, let's let the monkeys come through. <laughs> let's let them go on and do their thing. And so uh, most of the monkeys get through, and there's maybe three or four monkeys left. And um, I said, uh, let's go. And he says, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna wait to wait a little bit. And I said, it's three or four monkeys. Let's, let's do this. <laughs> and uh, they're small. They're like a small dog, like a border collie. Oh. And, uh, and uh, so, but more like an old man face on a border collie and sharp bangs, and they have opposable thumbs. And they're fast as shit, I learned. So I started walking down the alleyway, and uh, I later learned the... I'm out. So I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. It was the alleyway that Well done, you. well done. People don't like alleyways, yeah. No, That's alleyways my time. are, yeah. They're bad SEO. It's one minute, 53 seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get your thumbs in neutral position, please, for our next story. I haven't been working out enough for this. My arm's getting a little <laughs> no, tired. <it's> yeah. <laughs> I also have a story about being attacked, although not in, uh, I was not wearing any makeup at the time. I was attacked by a naked woman in the middle of the woods. Oh! It was Christmas night and I was 14 years old. We were going to my aunt's house, which was about an hour and a half away from my house. I was in my mom's car, she was driving. We get there in the middle of the woods, we're turning up the trail that leads to my aunt's house because there's a fucking trail in the middle of the woods. And we turn up this trail and the headlights fall upon a naked woman, I would guess somewhere in her mid-twenties, very attractive and very fit, just, just as a side note, and she <laughs> leaps, leaps like a fucking cougar onto the hood of the red hot car. Yeah. It's been on the road for an hour and a half. She leaps onto the car, screaming like an actual banshee. She is screaming like a monster out of what Irish folklore. <laughs> Just standing there, like on the hood of the car now, crouching on all fours and screaming. We, of course, leap out of the car. We see a and she's slamming her, she's slamming her hand on the windshield. We're afraid she's gonna break the windshield in. We we jump out of the car and we we're, we're yelling, you know, what do you want, what do you want, what do you want? And she points at my mom's boyfriend who was with us. And she said, I want his coat. <laughs> and that guy's leg. We said, I'm, 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 I, I looked at him, I was like, are you going to give her your coat? And he said, no, I'm not going to give her my coat. I don't, I, I, I want to keep this coat. And so I, we, we are looking at her and she is screaming, we don't know what's happening. A guy comes walking down the road, an old fucker, like, like 80 years old, comes walking down the road. Apparently she had been hitchhiking with him and she actually knocked his window out. She started stripping her clothes off in the car, knocked her windows out. So I get out of the car, and I say, okay, I'm going to run up to the house. I'm going to call the police. So I try to get around her, and I try to go up the driveway, which is like a good quarter of a mile long, and she starts coming at me. She gets off of the hood of the car. I'm 14 years old. She gets off the hood of the car, and she starts chasing me. She chases me up to my aunt's house. I run a quarter of a mile from a naked woman, which tells you something about my life right there, that I see a naked woman at 14 years old and literally run away <laughs> I run up to my aunt's house I get to the door and it is locked 
The door is locked. I cannot get in. She comes up and she starts screaming at me. She doesn't touch me, but she gets like as close as she can to me. She starts screaming at me. I'm banging on the door. And about that time, the sheriff shows up. The sheriff knows her. She's a regular. No big deal in the sheriff's eyes. So the sheriff like takes her, calms her down, puts a blanket on her and calms her down a little bit and then comes over to me. I'm shaking. I, I'm I, I uncontrollably shaking now and I'm like, I, I don't know what's happening right now. And he says, no, 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 it's just angel dust. She's fine. She'll sleep it off. It's not a big deal. And I'm like, that sounds like a big deal. And it seems like a big deal. Now here comes my mom coming up. They, they, they come up the driveway. They're in, her, they're in the car now. And then she starts screaming again because she sees the car that she's jumped on now. And now she has to be forced into the other car. There we go. Three minutes, 17 seconds. 317. 317. All right, next up. Thumbs Hello, in neutral position. Ladies and gentlemen, don't get Brody. All right, listen, so I don't know if you guys know this, but I toured for like 20 years and I would have a different person on the road. I mean, the story was about Brant, but if you don't want to hear it, then I guess I'll... Get Brody! All right. Nope. <laughs> All right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, get your thumbs in neutral position. Storyteller, please approach the mic and don't get Brody! My wife won't let me smoke crack in the Vatican. So I, uh, <laughs> we're planning a trip to Italy. <laughs> and as it turns out, we have a connection in the Vatican. So we're able to stay there for a couple nights. So of course, the only thing I can think of is, what's the best story that can come out of this happened in the Vatican? And so I'm like, well, I've never smoked crack. <laughs> And if there's only one better story than I smoke crack in the Vatican, it's I smoke crack for the first time in the Vatican. And my wife looks at uh, me in the face and says, no. At which point be uh, begins a very strange negotiation. It's like, okay, all right. So is heroin above or below crack for you? Like, just asking. Just to ask, like, you know, is there, uh, okay, too, too much? Okay, all right. Uh, uh, what about meth? Crystal meth? No? No? Okay. Uh, 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 yeah, that's my time, y'all. Peace. <laughs> One minute, 18 seconds. All right. So, sir, was that more or less than three minutes, 30 seconds? Much less. Yeah. Body Brushwood. Thumbs in neutral positions. Ladies and gentlemen, Bonnie Brushwood, don't get Brody. The three things Brian put in his mouth in our courtship. <laughs> Number one, a live goldfish. We have CJ Johnson in the audience. He was there. Brian and I and CJ see the world's smallest horse at the last reeling where they actually have elephants setting up the tents. And I'm so excited about our event and I think we're still secretly dating, you know? But, but Brian takes his, he, he takes the goldfish that he won. I don't know how he won them. But he's in there and decides, I'm going to be a geek, a geek magician. And he puts them in his mouth and I said, oh, I will never talk to you again. Also meaning, we're not gonna make out backstage anymore. We're not gonna, there is no relationship after him swallowing a live goldfish in my, I don't know what happened to the goldfish, but number two, number two later on, but he did spit it out, so we continue dating. Number two is a live crawfish. So we're, <laughs> All my friends moved away. I'm really excited to meet people in Austin. And Brian walks up to a party, 
and opens his mouth, I'm about to introduce him, and out crawls a crawfish. Yes. yes. And my, my potential new best friend says, oh, people can be so cruel. And I said, that's my fiance. And I just. Yes. Yes. She's not the girl for me. So, number three, we all know Brian wrote the book on fire eating. So, that's why number three is my pussy. Yes. <laughs> he can handle things that are that hot. So, now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moral. <laughs> There's a moral to the story, one for men and one for girls. Men, you may be going, oh, I don't know, I'm just so fucking weird. Who would want to date me? And I'm saying, this man snorted a oyster, a raw oyster, because his friends dared him to. So, that, you know, if it smells like fish and it crawls, no, no, no. And then, <laughs> Brian doesn't want me to keep talking. I will keep talking. <laughs> I <am> <laughs> so, you know, that's awesome. Keep on with your bad, weird self because there is somebody for everybody. And women, I don't know, before you swipe left, if he says, <laughs> if he says he wants to be a geek magician, don't give up. Don't give up, because if he can withstand the smell of fish, if he can withstand crawly things, then maybe there's potential there. There might be a love match just yet. So. Oh, no, night attack is through. Is there something that I've done? Is there something I could change? Oh, no, night attack is through. Brian, you're going to have some explaining to do because you potentially robbed her of first place. That was three minutes, 14 seconds. Oh! oh! So close. So close. I'm going to buy her so much fucking whiskey. Don't you cry for Argentina. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, we've just gotten an alert from the Don't Get Brodied headquarters. Uh, Brian's meager, shitty time has now been added to Bonnie's. <laughs> So I think that would put Bonnie in the lead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Nepotism. to the stage Nepotism. Matt Donnelly. Get your thumbs in neutral position, everyone. Don't get, get Brody. Before I lived in Las Vegas, I'd visit Las Vegas. And when I visit Las Vegas, I was a fucking tourist. And I remember being dragged by my nerd friends to the Star Trek experience. I remember listening to this fucking <laughs> Klingon, who was challenging people at the bar all the time to like left and right. And all of a sudden I was like, I'll take you on. I'll take you on. And he offers me this arm bullshit. I was like, what the fuck is this arm bullshit? I know Taekwon fucking dough. And so I fucking, I take him down. I fucking stick my knee in his neck. I wrench his arm back and I say, do you yield? You know what he said? I don't remember because he just came in his pants so hard. He fucking just jizzed so fucking hard. And I heard this moan, like, ah! Like, I've never, I've never satisfied a woman. Like, I satisfied that weird Klingon that day. <laughs> Cause there's snake by the whiskey, and whiskey by the snake! <laughs> Am I Brody yet? I'm Brody, yeah? That was 58 seconds, I'm gonna get one, one minute bonus. <laughs> so 158. All right, next up, Jason. Put your thumbs in neutral position and don't get Brody. This is a story of Brian Brushwood in Vietnam, and it is true. We used to live in one side of a duplex. Brian and Bonnie lived in the other. There was a lot of drinking and a lot of video games, of course, but uh, multiple nights per week, we would stumble across the street to this wretched hive of scum and villainy called Raggedy Ann's. And one night, Brian said, let's go to Raggedy Ann's and do karaoke. And I said, let's go watch you do karaoke. 
And so we went, and I don't know if you've ever seen Brian do karaoke. If you've never experienced that, he has two songs that he does. Uh, Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto by Styx, and Clarence Carter's Strokin, because it's vile. It's vile. But uh, tonight, Brian decides to sign me up first, and he says, let's do, he's like, I signed you up for something. Else. You don't have to sing. You don't have to sing. Because I was shy, and Brian is never shy about anything. He's like, it's great. You just say words. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's the end of the world as we know it by R.E.M. I can't read that fast. I stumbled through it. It was terrible. Brian comes up, and he's like, I got this. I got this. I'm going to save the day. He goes up, and he decides to do uh, an old Led Zeppelin song, Dire Maker, but... He decides to do it like Tony Clifton has diarrhea. <laughs> oh, 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 I've really got to go, oh. <laughs> and then people start throwing things at him. Yes! Okay, I, I started throwing things at him. And the rest of the bar joined in, and they started throwing things at Brian, and everyone's getting really pissed. The whole room turned against him. It was great. And uh, so we go back to the table, and this guy comes over, and I don't know if you've ever seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but he looked like the hitchhiker. He comes over, and he's just this guy. He's hanging by a thread, this guy. And he says, you don't know anything about that era. And Brian's like, I beg your pardon? Yes, I do. You are disrespecting the era that that music came from I was in Nam and this guy's angry and Brian goes I was in the shit too <laughs> and I thought Brian was gonna defuse it at that point no he's like oh, I was in the shit too just owning it and he's like you were not you were not I, w I was there you know, 41st infantry cavalry Brigade. And he's just sitting, and I'm like, I'm sitting there like, this isn't happening, this isn't happening, this isn't happening. I'm just gonna stare. Am I gonna have to fight an old man with Brian? Oh my God. And so this guy is screaming at him. You were not, he's like, I was there. I don't remember you being there. I was there. I don't remember that. And they're going back and forth and it's horrible. And then Brian says, yeah, let me buy you a drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so that's how we had drinks with a crazed Vietnam vet. And, uh, Thank you for your service. <laughs> Two minutes, 51 seconds. Ah, uh, but a good one, but a good one. Who's next? Who's next up? Is it in 80? It is in 80 yeah. for dual core, ladies and gentlemen. Put your thumbs in neutral position and don't get brodied. Uh, hello, I'm sorry if I appear nervous. Uh, Justin told me to come up and tell a story and I don't usually get up in front of people with the microphone. Uh, this story is about fucking with the NSA. I, uh, I ran a hacking competition at a hacking conference in Hawaii where the NSA were uh, sponsors and uh, this team registers under the name TAO, which was an NSA program that stood for Tailored Access Operations, and their whole purpose was to literally hack all the things. So we're like, LOL, look at this NSA team, and this guy comes in, he's like, hello, I'm from the NSA. I need to talk to you about a team that's in your hacking competition. And I'm like, oh, which team? And he's like, the TAO team. And I'm like, okay, what's up? And he's like, it stands for Tailored Access Operations, this is NSA program, and I'm like, oh, is that like classified? Because I don't have a clearance. You can't tell me that. Like, I, and he's like, no, no, it's no. And I'm like, oh, I don't get it. Hold on. And I like pop a Chrome and tab and I start typing in tailored access operations into Google. He goes, no, 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 don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> and I, I'm like, okay, like I, I don't get it. Like what's the issue? And he's like, well, can you just like tell us who the team members are? And I'm like, I, like, I don't know. Like I, 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 it's just a team. And he's like, can we change a team name? And I'm like, I'm not going to change the team name. And he's like, well, can you just tell us who the team members are? And I'm like, you're the NSA, don't you already know? <laughs> and he, he's, yeah. like, he's like, no, we just, we wanna know. And I'm like, well, is it your team? Like, you said it's an NSA program. And he's like, no, that's, that's not our team. And I was like, oh, I thought you were just mad because your team's not doing very well. You only have 200 <laughs> points. Trash talking the NSA. So I, uh, so I go on Twitter and I'm like, LOL, at NSA gov, you know, like your, your CTF team is not doing very well. And then the next team that registers is a SQL injection attempt in their name trying to drop the player's table out of the database. <laughs> so I take a screenshot of that and I'm like, LOL, at NSA gov, NSA gov, like you guys really need to step it up in all caps. 
butt hurt intensifies. <laughs> so I find out who the TAO team is, and I tell them, like, okay, you tell me, like, what, what prizes you want, because first place gets to pick from all the prizes, second place gets to pick from the remainder. They end up finishing fourth. So I'm like, first place, you know, coming up to the stage. And we have, like, this team come up, and they get, like, a black badge, which is, like, entry to the conference for free in second place, and then everyone's coming up and they're doing photo ops. And I'm like, in fourth place, we have the TAO team. They've selected this prize, and out of regards for OPSEC for the NSA, we're not bringing them on stage. In fifth place, and like all the NSA guys are like all screw face, like really giving me shitty looks in the crowd. So then in the following year, uh, I made a challenge, and it was called Hop-Ons. Have you all ever watched Arrested Development? So he drives the stair truck and is like, watch out, you're going to get some hop-ons. So the hop-ons challenge, it starts out with an image that has some shit in it, and you have to pull the files out of the image. Well, one of the files that you pull out from the image is a, pres a picture of President Obama, and it says, hello, Verizon, I'm interested in your share everything plan. <laughs> the other image is... Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. <laughs> It's a damn respectable should, time. Three minutes, 20 seconds. I should know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, put your thumbs in neutral position for Mike TV. Mike. Uh, okay. Mike TV. So this, Joe, this, this, is, Jeff, a very, this is a true story. This is a true story. I was, mm. working, I was working in film and TV at Warner Brothers. It was 2001, 2002. And uh, I was working this, like, with, with an executive producer that was very fucking, he was like, I don't, I'm not, I don't play this shit. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a practical joke, you motherfucker. So I create, uh, I am TV's Gary Coleman at gmail.com. And I send him, an, I send him, an, I send him an email. I send him, I send him, I send him an email that says, hey man, so we're, we're in the second season. It's called, it was, the, the, the show is called Project Zeta. We're in the second season. The voice of Project Jane has already been has, has already been established, and and I, but but I'm like I'm like hey I'm Gary Coleman and I think I'd be perfect for the voice of Project Zeta, and so and and I will be there tomorrow at 3 p.m. to audition for this voice. So of course 3 3 p.m. rolls around and Gary Coleman doesn't show up, but 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 my my buddy, the executive producer Bob, just will call him Bob. Yeah yeah. Bob, so, so Bob, Bob's, Bob's losing his mind. Like, he's like, well, Gary Cohen's about to show up. So he doesn't show up. So, so then I send him another email, and I say, hey, I showed up at, because... Oh! Oh! Uh, it's a real story! It's oh. One minute, 26 seconds. We right. told you not to get brodied. Yeah. yeah. The instructions were pretty clear. All right, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands in neutral position. Are you ready? Andrew, don't get Brody! Thank you. My story is the three things Brian Brush would put in his mouth while we were in book club together. <laughs> Number one was a crawfish. We saw that coming. Number two was someone involved with the NSA. <laughs> and number three was, of course, a Klingon. I can keep going with a different one, or shall I come back? What do we think? Yeah. Keep going. I've got, I've got a story. It involves guns and the British. Do you want to keep doing it? Yes? Okay. All right. So, so the real story is the time the British accused me of gun smuggling. Yes! Can I, can I ask, because we're in Texas, if you were in the airport and you had rep, replica dueling pistols, they're replica dueling pistols, would you report those on your little form in Heathrow Airport as a gun? Yeah. Well, congratulations, audience, for knowing something that I didn't know. I thought they were goddamn toys, and I was wrong about that because I delayed a 747 by about an hour and a half. The British came to get me and went, are you smuggling dueling pistols? And I went, no, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And these guys in flak jackets <laughs> took me, I'm like 20, 20 at the time, like, uh, no, I'm 18. They take me uh, out to the middle of the tarmac, yeah. And, and I'm, there's nothing. There's a van and armed British people. And you might think armed British people aren't terrifying, but you've never seen them hold guns before. They're actually really terrifying. And they, it's just me in the middle of this tarmac, and we, they bring me into a van, and they, we're all in there, and they go, Mr. Heaton, 
would you please take the offending items out of your bag? And there's one bag, and I go, <laughs> and I, I pull this thing out, they go, stop! And I go, <laughs> and they go, those are very nice, where did you get them from? I got them from Scotland. I think it was from Dramnatakis. Of course, there was are. a tower near a, a line. They were very nice. They didn't fire. No, they don't fire. That's fine. Okay. All right. And I go, okay. And I start this. Stop. Ah! We have bubble wrap. Cedric. And this guy comes over and bubble wraps them for me. And I put them up and go onto the plane that was delayed by an hour and a half, which was the most awkward entrance to a plane flight I've ever been on. That's it, thank you. Two minutes, 24 seconds, 2.24. And that brings us to the end of Celebrity Don't Get Brody. Uh, Brian, hey, Brian, 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 I'm Brian. glad you're a weird, I, fucked I have, up person. I, I have a 15 second story. Oh! Do you guys want to see a I'm story in, from Rex? I'm not in contention. I'm not in contention, the story is so short, but we recently started the YouTube channel. I've never had a fan before. I was told, hey, there's a fan, he's right around the corner. He's dying to meet you. So like, oh shit, I'm gonna, like, I had a, my, my t-shirts there, I put on a good t-shirt, and I got his name, <laughs> and I'm like researching him. By the time I get there, I'm more of a fan of him than he is of me. And he's like, hey man, great to meet you, cool, great kid. Hey, can I get a photo with you? Sure, dude, sure, yeah, fan. Let me, help, let me help you here. Okay. <laughs> and the moment, the moment his friend is pushing the button on the phone to take the picture, he turns to me and says, man, I can't wait to tell my friends I got a picture with Jason Murphy. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, folks, literally, there's only one more piece of business to do for South by So Wasted 2019, and that is to bring up our winners. So uh, we, will, we, we are doing the math here. I'm Brian, here. you're uh, welcome. Brian, I, I, I think, think, I I think really that you should, you should actually get a celebratory shot just because all the best stories <laughs> were about you personally. Sure. What am I, what am I having a celebratory shot of? We're sponsored do, do, by them. Do you think you won, Brian? I think I was told. Campari. God damn it. <laughs> oh, it turns out it's Campari. All right. There's the rest of it. Don't get campari uh, All right, here we go. Uh, third place. Oh, third, God, place. That's awful. <laughs> third place. Third place. <clears throat> Starting, uh, we got the uh, NSA. M80 hey. from Dulcor. Where's hey. Dulcor? Come on the up. NSA story. Just stand Dual up core. here. Stand up here. All right, so here's what we do. We all look at them and we say, you magnificent bastard. Ready, one, two, three, and... You, you magnificent, magnificent bastard. bastard. Obrigado. <laughs> Second place. That means hello in Portuguese. <laughs> there we go. There. Yeah! I love that also we're having these like rare expensive whiskeys and people are just shooting them on stage. Second place, the Klingon. Yeah! 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 Paul, Paul Mattingly! Ladies and gentlemen, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Wait, 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 wait. I took them then and I'm taking them now. <laughs> I will tell you right now, Paul Mattingly doesn't give a shit about amazing uh, bourbon and a whiskey, and I do. Yeah. Well, Paul, you know what? You, 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 uh, Matt, you yield? Matt? I fully offer Matt. Uh, he can be my drinker of the celebratory shot. You know what we say but to I, you, Matt? We say, you, you magnificent, magnificent bastard. bastard. And let me add, oi dashik jaj, which means may you endure the pain. <laughs> hey, Ladies Paul? and gentlemen, ice hey. cream social. Hey, Paul. Kapla. 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 Well, then that would only leave. Oh, fuck, that's good. <laughs> Paul would have hated this, and it was amazing. <laughs> that would only leave one more person. I wonder who. Who it do is. you guys think it is? 
Well, you're the wrong. That's the end of the winner. show. Thanks for coming. Bonnie, All right. Bonnie, what? Bonnie, They're turning Bonnie, against Bonnie us. Bonnie Brushwood! Bonnie Brushwood! Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Up, uh, you magnificent <laughs> bastard! Oh, no, I'll drink this slowly. This is nice. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're not gonna do slowly: end the show. We have a hard out right now. So, uh, number one, this is the most uh, amazing live show we've ever done. It has been an honor to share it with you guys. Uh, but for, for, for the last 30 minutes, there is merch in the back that I've neglected to mention the entire fucking show. Let's hear some noise for Tom Merritt of Daily Tech News Show. Thank you. Let's keep it going for Andrew Heaton. Give it up for Rex and Daniel of the Whiskey Tribe. Big shout out one more time to Ice Cream Social. Guys, I want so much noise for Jomo and the Possum yeah. Posse. Yeah. And keep that going for Dukor. Yeah. And awkwardly, I belly for myself and my friend Jason Murphy as we say, what's up, Martin Rowe? Oh. <laughs> Folks, do we have the lullaby on there? What did we learn today? Well, we learned that uh, we could definitely sell oh, out the North Door and make an awesome true. fucking show. Is this yeah. That I did? Is this By the way, quick shout do? out to Mike TV, who loves oh, Mike yeah. TV. Also, uh, I don't know, tomorrow? VIPs? Yeah. See you guys? That's, a, that, that, that's definitely a thing. Uh, we learned so much about Andrew myself. Heaton. We, uh, and, and Cedric. <laughs> uh, I mean, I like, I, I, I'm going to be honest, folks. This is what dreams coming true look like. Thank you so much for being here. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. Look, you know that we love you from the bottom of our hearts because we say to you, right into your beautiful, beautiful faces, die in a fire. See you next Tuesday. We can sing this one. Here we go. Not a tad attack, not a tad attack, not a tad attack, not a tad attack, not a attack, I love you. Diamond Club hopes you've enjoyed this program. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.